We've all been told a million times that we should include more fiber in our diet, and we're given multiple reasons for this. The purpose of this video is to question how much fiber should we be getting in our diet? And more importantly, what does the research actually say about this? Not necessarily epidemiological observational research that's based on food frequency questionnaires, but what does actual randomized control research say about the fiber question? I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical practice. And this video is gonna help you understand how much fiber do you need to eat each and every day? All you have to do is turn on the television or read a magazine article or jump on Twitter and you're gonna to be told things over and over like eating more fiber helps support weight loss, lowers your cholesterol, lowers your blood sugar, improves your heart health, prevents diabetes completely, helps constipation, decreases your risk of colon cancer, or my personal favorite, that it detoxes some part of your body. Now, people who have ever taken too much fiber, either from fiber-containing foods or from a fiber supplement, will tell you that the side effects of having too much fiber are no fun whatsoever. They include gas, lots of gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, wait a minute, constipation, yeah, and, and cramping and actually worsening of irritable bowel syndrome symptoms. So it's, it's almost like your bowel is telling you, hey, don't eat all this fiber. But many powers that be, including the FDA and the American Heart Association say, hey, you need to eat lots of fiber. If you're a man, you should eat from 30 to 38 grams each and every day. If you're a woman, you should eat 21 to 25 grams each and every day. If you're a child between the ages of one and eight, you should eat 14 to 31 grams each and every day. So what does the research say? But first, let's talk about where this idea even came from. Who had the bright idea that we should eat lots of fiber in our diets? It actually comes from a British surgeon by the name of Dennis Burkett. And he was a very, very intelligent surgeon. There's actually a childhood cancer, Burkitt's lymphoma, named after him. He was a very prominent British surgeon. He practiced in Africa for years. And he noticed that the Af African natives who were his patients had these ginormous poops several times a day. And he also noticed that they ate a lot of fiber in their diet. And he also noticed that they didn't have colon cancer very often. And they definitely didn't have constipation. And they didn't really seem to have any other bowel issues. And so he came up with this hypothesis that eating a high fiber diet should protect the human body from lots of things, including constipation and colon cancer. So this idea literally came from an impromptu hunch that a single individual had. Uh, he did not do any control research. He did not do any meaningful research on this whatsoever. He just wrote a book about this and became known as the fiber guy and lectured all over the world. And since, I, as I mentioned earlier, he was a very prominent British surgeon and he had done some very good work in other areas, people tended to take what he said as gospel. One thing that you need to understand is that these Africans that he was studying and practicing on, they also didn't eat any added sugar whatsoever. And they also didn't eat any highly processed grains and they also didn't eat any vegetable oils. So there's that. He also had one other hypothesis, which I tend to agree with. Uh, he hypothesized that squatting is a better position to take a bowel movement in than sitting, and that it would help with constipation and other bowel problems. Now, I, I think that hasn't been proven either, but I think he may have been onto something there. Now, let's talk quickly about what fiber actually is. Fiber is plant matter that our gut absolutely cannot digest. It is, well, basically, it's the same exact thing as sawdust or cardboard, okay? So uh, when you start looking at some of these claims, like it prevents, it, it helps you lose weight. Well, if I took you where you're at right now and I replaced 10 or 20% of your diet with sawdust, and every day we just mix sawdust into your oatmeal and into your cornflakes, and so you were getting 10 to 20% more fiber a day 
fiber that your body cannot break down, cannot use as nutrition in any way whatsoever, doesn't contribute any calories, carbohydrates, protein, fat to your diet. Well, duh, yeah, you're gonna lose weight because I'm feeding you something you cannot use as nutrition, right? This is also the way it lowers your blood sugar because however much of your diet you're replacing with fiber is giving you no nutritional benefit at all, including no carbohydrates. So of course, your blood sugar is gonna come down. As for the claim that it improves heart health or decreases your risk of heart attack or stroke, again, we're replacing 10 to 20% of your diet with sawdust or cardboard every day. So you're not able to eat that much in volume of sugars and grains and vegetable oils. So we're basically by putting 10 to 20% sawdust into your diet, you're not able to eat the things that are actually increasing your risk of heart attack and stroke. So yeah, that kind of makes sense. Now there is the argument that gut bacteria living in your large intestine can break down this fiber and use it. And then somehow magically you derive nutrition from that. Now it is true that the, the bacteria in your gut can break down this fiber and they can use it as fuel because they can actually break the cellulose down but you cannot. Now there is some limited evidence that the short chain fatty acids that these bacteria produce from eating the cardboard and the sawdust um, can move across the cell membrane of your enterocytes, which are the cells that line your gut wall. And your enterocytes probably do benefit from these short uh, chain fatty acids a little bit, but that's not really nutrition for you. That's just those cells. Now, the truth is those cells get plenty of short chain fatty acids from your circulation, like your cells are supposed to get nutrition from, right? And there's very little evidence that your entire body actually benefits from these short chain fatty acids whatsoever. Now, what these bacteria also make, in addition to the short chain fatty acids, is they also produce lots of greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide and you experience this in the form of gas and farts. And so by eating a high fiber diet, are you actually contributing to global warming? Now let's look at the actual research uh, to support all these claims about fiber. So the weight loss claim with regards to eating more fiber has literally never been proven. There are some epidemiological studies that show a possible association but there is no control research showing any causation whatsoever. So mark that one off your list. What about preventing diabetes and lowering blood sugar? Well, I talked about earlier how this might happen if I made you eat 20% of your diet as cardboard. Well, yeah, you're not getting any carbohydrates that you can use. So therefore your blood sugar is gonna come down and, and you're, you won't develop diabetes. But that's kind of a weird way to prevent diabetes, isn't it? Surely there's a better way than that. What about improving your heart health? Well, uh, there's literally no research that's, that's of a control fashion that proves this or shows any kind of causation. It's all epidemiological research. Now, the detox thing. Anybody, anytime anybody on the planet says, hey, buy my product and it will detox your liver or your kidneys or whatever, you can officially hit the unfollow button right there or the block button because that's bullshit. Okay, if you wanna detox any part of your body, you fast. That's how you do that. that. It's cheap, easy, free, side effect free. You never buy a product to detox your body. What about the claim about constipation? Eating more fiber helps with constipation. Uh, anybody who has irritable bowel C or chronic constipation or idiopathic constipation, they'll answer this question for you. Anybody who's tried to eat more fiber for constipation, put, put in the comments what your actual results were because the results are always more gas, more bloating, uh, maybe more constipation or diarrhea and cramping. Those are not solutions, okay? Just because you're putting more roughage in that your body has to expel as quickly as possible, that doesn't mean you're, at, you're meaningfully treating the constipation. There's actually a, a, a very well done little study on this. Let me read you the conclusion. This was a study done in 63 patients, and what they did was they gave them different, and they all suffered from idiopathic constipation, and the researchers gave them different amounts of fiber, and, and one group, they gave no fiber, and then they, they kind of swapped them around and kept playing with this, and here's their conclusion. Idiopathic constipation and its associated symptoms can be effectively reduced by stopping or even lowering 
the intake of dietary fiber. So there's a link down in the show notes if you want to read the whole study. It, it's, it, it, I know really you're probably sitting there going, wait, what? I thought, what, what? Yeah, exactly. So fiber does not help in any meaningful way with idiopathic constipation, chronic constipation, or IBS-C. It doesn't help with any of those. It's gonna make you have worse symptoms. The more you cut your fiber, the better your symptoms will be. Now let's talk about colon cancer because that's really, once you've narrowed some a, a pro-fiber person down, this is the one they're always gonna cling to is that it decreases your risk of colon cancer. So let's talk about a study. And again, the links are down in the show notes below so you can check this out for yourself. Uh, they, it's a meta-analysis of five randomized control trials in humans. That's important, right? And so they, they analyzed these five different studies that purported to, well, they had the hypothesis that, that eating more fiber decreased your risk of colon cancer. Here's the conclusion from this study. There is currently no evidence from randomized control trials to suggest that increased dietary fiber intake will reduce the incidence or recurrence of adenomatous polyps within a two to four year period. Adenomatous polyps are the precursors of colon cancer. So no evidence, no RCTs to even suggest this. Okay, now let's go to another study. This study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. It was a meta-analysis of 13 cohort studies, very, very large studies. And after they crunched all the numbers, here's the conclusion they found. In this large pooled analysis, dietary fiber intake was inversely associated with risk of colorectal cancer in age-adjusted analysis. However, however, that's an important word, after accounting for other dietary risks, high dietary fiber intake was not associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. Yeah, you heard me right. So now let me answer the question that was asked in the title of this video. How much fiber do you need each day? Well, according to the randomized control trials and the actual research on actual human beings, you don't need any. Okay, if you happen to eat some fiber occasionally, I don't think it's dangerous or bad. It's probably not a big deal. It may lead to increased uh, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, and cramping if you eat too much. But do you need to try to get the, the 21 to 38 grams that the American Heart Association recommends? No, you don't. There's zero research report supporting this. So why did the AHA say this? I'm not sure. Maybe we should ask them in a tweet. The FDA said the same thing. What research did they base it on? None. It is all based on an impromptu hypothesis had by a very famous British surgeon decades ago, and there has never been a credible study to show causation between fiber and any of the things that you will hear as potential benefits for getting more fiber in your diet. Therefore, Stop trying to get fiber in your diet. If you're taking a fiber supplement, throw that crap in the garbage. It's a waste of money. If you're trying to eat high fiber foods that you don't really like, stop doing that, okay? Just eat more fatty meat. You don't need fiber. Fiber has never been proven to help you in any meaningful way. Now, your gut bacteria, they appreciate it when you eat fiber and they make carbon dioxide and methane to warm the, the, the atmosphere when you do. So maybe think twice before taking another fiber supplement or eating another high fiber food. I sure hope this video has cleared up some confusion you may have had about fiber in your diet. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please consider clicking that subscribe button and the bell button right beside it. I try to post two to three new videos every week and that way you'll get a notification and you don't miss it when I call out institutions that are saying something they should know better than to say. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.